Thanks, Chris. Um, so um, every so often we take a diversion from the technical meet of um, you can off just to tell you a little bit about how the organization is doing. Um, traditionally, we've done that at the September meeting when we have the UK North Annual Meeting, um, which was mostly participated in by the Advisory Council and uh, Advisory Committee and, and some of the Program Committee. We usually have a bigger audience in London, so we thought it was important to um, share with you um, where we're at. Um, also, um, we have a smaller than usual audience here, and, and there's some, some reasons for that that we'd like to just share with you a little bit more. So, um, where are we at? Um, this is our 42nd meeting. Um, I think we can say that every meeting has been a success. Um, the range of attendees that we've had has been anywhere between 40, and we've, you know, at peak we've had 350 people registered for meetings. Um, mailman list is steady at around 1,500 people. Um, we have the program committee, the advisory committee, the board, um, and some very committed regular volunteers that we rely on every single time. And we have a reasonably stable ongoing financial base. Um, we do three meetings a year. Um, we try and keep it relevant um, and interesting as far as the um, UK network operations is concerned. Um, Although the UK is very well served by other bodies, uh, many of them are mission specific and or um, closed to some extent. We have a more free ranging remit um, and we um, also um, are more open. We're open to everybody. Um, and the idea is that that encourages new blood into the industry. Um, another thing that we do um, is to bring international speakers. Um, you know, we know not all of you can travel, um, but there's a lot of best practice that we can learn from out there. So bring in international speakers from other meetings to the UK. Um, there are mailing list discussions, um, and we have a whole bunch of social media channels as well. So how did last year go? Interesting year. Um, one of the things that we did is that we created a process for the program committee um, to be able to appoint um, a board member. Um, so um, a board director to, to, to UKIF. Um, if you look at the total number of people that registered or attended for our meetings across the three years, uh, the three meetings of the year, there was growth. Um, and um, we have a, a core that we can rely on of, of, of sponsors and partners um, and, 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 and worked with them. However, um, that wasn't sufficient. We had some challenges to our sustainability model, uh, which resulted in a decrease in our cash reserves. Um, and of course, while we were looking after the business um, from the, the real point of view, we had to do the whole GDPR thing as well. Um, so, meetings last year, um, London and Manchester, the numbers were up again. Um, our meeting in Edinburgh, as we have seen with other um, of our roving September meetings, the numbers were somewhat down, which, which, which means that you know, overall there was some growth, but um, maybe not what we would like. Um, the proportion of first-time attendees is roughly static, around 30%. And although we have set ourselves some objectives in terms of improving attendee diversity, that's remained, the demographics there have remained pretty static as well. Um, also, the number of people that cancel at the last minute or don't show up for the meeting um, is in the increase as well. Um, and um, you know, that, that just creates wasted, it just wastes admin resources. Um, so you can, you can see that here. Um, you can see basically over the past few years that the, the numbers for the third meeting of the year are down. Um, but the, the, uh, the first London meeting always has the most. There's always very good attendance in Manchester. Um, but this, this particular London meeting, which is the last line on the graph, um, the numbers are somewhat down. Um, you can off meetings cost money. Um, because we're above a certain size, um, there are certain venues that we are limited to going to. When we go to these venues, there is a kind of minimum cost that goes with that. Um, your day here is typically costing about £200 um, per attendee. Um, and that covers a whole bunch of things like venue, catering, AV hire. Um, it's variable, obviously. Some cities, London and Manchester, are more expensive than other cities. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other bits and pieces, you know, badges, connectivity, um, admin. Um, and you know, it takes admin time to do that. Um, the model that we have is that some of the UK board members um, contract their time to UK and off. Um, roughly that's about £30 an hour. We don't always pay that out if we can't afford it. Um, and there's the, for transparency, those directors submit a quote to the board at the start of the year. Um, and the finances are, are scrutinised by the, um, the advisory committee um, and are always presented at the annual meeting and available. Um, so how does that pan out for our income and expenditure? 
Um, the, the expenses, the white line, um, that is kind of like the fixed overheads of, of things like um, running the website, um, the, the contracted time of the directors, and that, that's pretty, it's pretty steady for a while now. Um, you can see that the income varies, but it has been sort of creeping downwards lately, um, and you can see that the meeting costs are creeping upwards as well, and, and that is a worldwide thing. The cost of running conferences seems to be going ahead of the rate of inflation. So, why is our income going down? Um, basically, we've relied heavily on sponsorship. Um, in our little corner of the industry, um, there's a lot of consolidation and restructuring and activist investors and things like that's going on. Um, and it just makes the conversations with the sponsors that little bit more difficult when you go back to them. Um, you know, we, we appreciate the support that we get from our sponsors, um, but not all our sponsors are in a business position to be able to do that every time. That's getting harder. As I said, the cost of running conferences seems to be subject to some kind of global inflation. Um, and um, you know, we are very aware that a lot of the people here are, are more senior people in our organization. We'd like to make it easier for junior people to attend, to bring some new blood in, um, and to just generally engage the community is, is, is an ongoing objective that we have. So um, Dinesh thought about this um, quite hard. Um, he's done a bunch of work in terms of defining um, what is our new funding strategy? Um, so I will hand you over to Dinesh, who will now um, tell you a little bit about that and um, how that works. Hi, everyone. Um, so as Keith mentioned, I'll be talking about the funding strategy. Just as a summary, um, the, the um, way I looked at it was that we needed to get rid of a single point of failure in our funding. And I started looking at this from a holistic point of view to provide some sort of balanced approach to this. Um, and I'll explain that as I go along. So the funding aims uh, from the beginning have always been about lowest cost barrier to entry to widest possible audience. Um, the other thing was about sustainability. And why do we need sustainability? The thing is that we, we find that UK North seems to be growing in popularity. Um, it's all about spreading a clue, um, which is what we want to do. We want to increase the knowledge in the industry. Um, and to be able to do that, we need to sustain ourselves. So part of our sustainability was, aim was to have about two to three meetings worth of funds so that if we needed to wind down, that we could wind down gracefully. Um, and um, so, but what we found was over the past year, uh, past couple of years, was we were starting to dip into our reserves. So hence why we came up with a new strategy. So looking at the, uh, the way that we started funding in the early days, going back to 2005, um, it was all based on volunteer effort, um, uh, the way that a lot of new NOGs start up. So some sponsorship, about two to three thousand pounds to go towards our catering costs. Um, venues were mainly donated. We had about 50 to 80 people attend in those days. And in-kind services and a funding council, that gave us a bit of money every year. Um, in-kind services such as um, Bogons have provided webcasting since then and um, Portfast have done the connectivity. And these things, if we had to pay for them, are, are actually quite expensive. And when you go to the commercial world, um, uh, it, there's a lot of uh, saving that we have here. So thank you to our partners, long-term partners here. Um, the next step was looking at um, growth of the community because, of course, we had a core set of attendees. 40 to 50 of the 80 to 90 people were attending every single meeting. But what we found was that actually it was the same attendees. Um, and that's not, not a bad thing, but we need to increase the knowledge in the industry. So we needed to look at how the next step and how we, we grow the community and bringing new blood into it. Um, and we, we had to look at the funding from that point of view, so we went out and looked for sponsorship in, in higher terms where we could also afford to pay for uh, more expensive venues, venues like this, uh, which allowed, allowed us to grow because we got to a point where um, the donated venues, we had to turn people back on the day. Like, actually, there's no space. Sorry, you can't come in. Um, so to grow, the, to grow the community, we had to look at sponsorship. Um, and so it was mainly sponsor-based, some patronage, and um, late registration fees. Um, the late registration fees actually came in not, not to make money, but actually it was, it was to do with preventing those people who phoned me up as I'm driving up to the venue the day before and saying, I forgot to register. Could you just register me? And registration had closed by then. Nine times out of ten, they never actually turned up. So it was, it was a way of, um, of getting people to register as early as possible. Um, and, of course, the in-kind services continued. Um, thank you. 
uh, to our partners. But the issues with this model um, are, were to do with um, uncertainty. We were too reliant on sponsorship and um, talking to the sponsors over the past couple of years um, and seeing the market consolidation, marketing funds being refocused elsewhere. Um, we, and we, we found that we were running short of funds and we're starting to dip into reserves. Um, so we had to look at something. And the recent model, uh, the recent, uh, model that we had uh, showed that we had uh, meeting costs were increasing. So on average, they increased between 8 and 10% a year. Um, uh, venues are getting um, busier and busier. So, uh, for example, for, with Manchester, um, looking at going back to Manchester, I'm already discussing um, uh, signing contracts with them all the way up to 2023. Because if I don't, then we won't have any space. Um, you know, doing it a year in advance like we used to is, is not good enough anymore. Um, the overheads are fairly static, but the in income has been decreasing um, quite drastically. And 2018 ended um, on about £31,500 loss. Here's just a, a snapshot of the past um, three years, uh, just to show you um, the income and expenditure. Uh, and uh, 2018 does look quite bad. Um, we, the thing is that we'd, been, we'd, we'd noticed some changes starting two years ago, so a lot of thinking had started um, back in 2016 about what we should do, hence the patronage came in, hence we started charging late registration fees um, and uh, doing, doing some other things. So we tried the patronage, um, not many did, thanks to BT who've supported us for the past few years in, in that way. Um, uh, patronage was not only organisation pa patronage but individuals. Um, we had some, um, a handful of individuals, so thank you for your funds there. We tried other avenues such as providing training, paid training. Um, that didn't seem to work so well. We offered pay, as you want, uh, pay what you want registrations, where we actually said to the uh, community, registrations are still free, um, but if you can afford to pay something, then please do. And um, we tried different ways of encouraging people to um, um, pay something towards a registration, putting the link at the top, putting the link in the middle, wherever it was, um, making it bold, making it bigger text. But what we found was only a handful of people actually paid anything, even if it was just a tenner. Um, and then, of course, um, keeping in constant contact with sponsors. And um, last year, a whole lot of sponsors told us that uh, actually we can't discuss sponsorship with you like we normally do in August and September for the coming year. Um, it will be December at the earliest that we can start discussing things. Our marketing departments have changed. The, the, thing, uh, the, the funds are being refocused elsewhere. They want to put money towards exhibitions and so on and so forth. Um, and that caused us a lot of pain because we, we just didn't know where 2019 was going. So I started looking at this um, and I wanted to take a holistic approach. Um, the thing is that um, it started working at this um, properly um, in, in September, but I was actually looking at this from January last year as well. Um, and having spoken with the sponsors about what their, um, um, what, what sort of ROI they're looking at and what their expectations are, I came up with a, a, a rejigged meeting sponsorship scheme. Um, we changed the patronage so that it's now corporate patronage with different tiers, um, and it's annual on a calendar year basis. Um, and for individuals, we've, we've gone to Patreon and uh, you, you, can, you can become a friend of UK NOF, um, Patron, um, by just giving us maybe a five a month or something, as low as that. And, and uh, thank you to our um, initial ones, where we've got, of the five friends so far we've got, since it got released on the 1st of January, two are from the States who are never going to attend. So, uh, but that, it's nice to know that uh, we, we've got that type of support. Uh, and we've also looked at uh, registration fees, and um, as I mentioned earlier, the registration fees where we initially said, pay what you want, it just didn't work. So we had to do something where we introduce registration fees for everyone. Of course, we give away some free registrations, which, are, which I'll explain later. Um, but we've had to do this um, to provide some sort of um, holistic, balanced approach to our funding model. Um, and of course, uh, long-term in-kind services um, by our long-term partners, um, Bogons and, uh, uh, and uh, Portfast continue. So thank you for that. So looking at this meeting, um, when, when, when we did the slides, we had 185 registrations, of which 126 were paid. Um, the rest are all free uh, or complimentary. Um, complimentary ones go to the PC board. Um, 
the AC. Um, and we, we give um, complimentary ones to our partners, long-term partners and patrons and sponsors as well, um, uh, in limited numbers. Um, and all accepted speakers get, get, their, um, uh, get their free registrations. And volunteers from a previous meeting also get free registration. So if you'd like to attend for free, you need to volunteer at a previous meeting. Uh, but only the previous one, not any others. And um, we had 15 students slash unfunded registrations, which are um, what part of our model is that uh, we do understand that there are those who can't afford to come to these meetings. Um, and so what we'd like to do is um, we'd like to offer about 10% of our registration base um, uh, free registrations. So in, in this case, we had 35 registrations available for free. Um, because we normally expect about 350 registrations, um, but only 15 have been taken up. Actually, there were 18, but three of them cancelled. Um, so registration charging, I'll, I'll explain a little bit about this. Um, we, we've tried to avoid charging for registrations for as long as possible, um, and that, that did help us grow the community, um, and it was nice to see the community grow, but we've had to do something, as I've mentioned. But to continue this principle, we've, um, we keep some free registrations. Um, it's about 32 to 35 percent of our, the registrations we hand out are, are, are complimentary. And then uh, we go into the charging bit. And um, to encourage people to pay, we, we go as low as 75 percent discount on early bird. Um, and these are done on a tiered basis and a time limited fashion. Um, so 75 percent, 50 percent, followed by 25 percent, and then full fee. And for a walk in, there's a surcharge. So the aim is basically to keep the lowest cost barrier to widest possible audience, rebuilding and maintaining reserves, and sustainability with no single point of failure. So, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tanash. I mean, you know, it's, it's not all doom and gloom by any means. We're working on a solution. We've made progress. The good news is that we have broken even for this meeting by the diverse funding um, approach that we've taken. Um, you know, quite often this is our most expensive meeting. I know that most of you here have paid. Thank you for your support. Um, I know that um, there are a bunch of you who are probably watching on the webcast who are like, oh, we're not going this time because we can't afford it. Please consider how much um, a 60 quid registration fee is compared to your billable time or your travel costs here or what it would cost for equivalent quality of professional development um, paid for training or, or an international <coughs> meeting. Anyway, um, so um, thank you all for your support, um, sponsors, patrons, friends, red paying attendees, um, all our volunteers and helpers. Um, just want to say a little bit more about um, how we generate the content. Um, we take high quality content very seriously. Uh, one of the things that we do is um, the process that we use to evaluate the submissions by the program committee is quantitative. The, um, survey results that we get back from your quantitative, we compare the scores after every meeting and make sure that the, the program committee is in step with what you, what you like. Um, we had some really good submissions in 2018. Um, I'm sure we can continue to do that 2019. Um, so please, um, as Dinesh says, if you're a speaker, you get a free registration. Um, you, you're all doing interesting stuff. Please let us know about it. Um, also, just to understand that um, when our sponsors get a sponsor speaking slot, the criteria, um, they, they're basically there because they're paying for it. We're very clear about which content is sponsors um, led and which um, is approved on, on quality criteria by the PC. We do have a process where we make sure that the, um, the sponsors um, get some feedback so that they will give some, uh, their presentations will still be of interest to you without being a, a, a vacant sales pitch. Um, again, we have some sponsors that are really good at recognizing that. Um, and the other thing is that if you're a sponsor, you don't get to submit. Um, you can do one or the other, um, but not both. And that's just so that we don't finish up with this horrible advertorial situation where you're sitting through presentations and you're not sure whether it's a sales pitch or whether it's real content. Um, um, a little bit about systems. Um, most of the systems that we run in order to support UK NOF, uh, we awarded a contract to Mythic Beasts a couple of years ago. Um, that has been working extremely well. Um, everything works smoothly and scales smoothly, and it's just, um, you know, we can focus on, on running the, um, the forum rather than um, um, worrying about all the IT headaches that everyone has in their day job. 
Um, one of the things is the Indico conferencing platform that we run. Um, there was a major um, upgrade to that in um, pending. Um, the Mythic guys did that over the Christmas holidays. Um, it went very smoothly. Um, as we already mentioned, Portfast and Bogons are our partners for providing the meeting connectivity and webcasting. Um, as far as our content, you know, all, all of these things need management. We could really do with a little bit of volunteer help on that. Also, I know how much you all love the Emacs and HTML hand-coded website that we have. Um, I'm pleased to report that Mike has, um, has done some work uh, with Bamboo in Manchester to do a website redesign for us. So um, this will basically just be a kind of clearinghouse for all of our other properties, um, mostly automated content um, driven um, but um, hopefully by UK Now 43, um, you will not have to stare at my 1990s hand-coded website anymore, and, um, and this will be a lot easier to manage. Um, UK Now governance is something that we mostly talk about at the annual meeting. I just wanted to, um, for those of you who are not familiar, how do we run it? Um, we're not running a mission-critical national infrastructure here. Um, I know a lot of you are, um, but... Um, it's important not to overthink. When you've got a lot of smart people in the room, um, it's very easy to overthink these things. We've tried to keep a simple model, um, and the idea is that the board is accountable to the community through stakeholder, the non various key non-profit internet organizations in the UK and, and internationally. Um, they form our advisory committee um, who appoint representatives, um, and um, basically, um, the legal entity is UKIF Limited, which was set up in 2005. It's public company limited by guarantee, just like all the other IORGs in the UK. Um, we run it on a not-for-profit basis, and, and that's where all the, the, the boring admin stuff happens, the bookkeeping, the invoicing, the, the bank accounts. Um, and we've been supporting UK NOF for the past dozen years. Um, these are the board members. Um, nearly all of us are here. Uh, Willie and Liz send their apologies today, but the, the rest of us are available if you, um, if you want to check in with us on any issues or check in on your um, advisory committee. Um, these are the advisory committee representatives, um, and basically um, they provide the oversight to the board um, and they um, participate in the annual meeting, which we had in Edinburgh back in September, and we'll have again in September this year. Um, we think that we've grown our own community. Uh, we're not completely dependent on the IORGs who are all key in helping us get up and running. Is there some way that we can make our um, governance a bit more accountable without um, going completely over the top and having elections and huge um, governance debates? Um, and um, essentially what we've decided is that we will find lightweight ways to um, allow appointment of board members which um, are accountable to the community um, and, and that's, that's an evolutionary process. <coughs> the first step that we did in that evolution was um, we decided that the, um, the program committee um, really are absolutely key. They do a huge amount of work um, and they're key stakeholders. So we created a process where the, the program committee appoints a board member um, and um, that resulted in Liz being appointed from the, by the program committee to the board. But it's important to understand this is not a program committee representative on the board. Rather, the program committee puts forward somebody who becomes a fully independent board member in their own right. Um, additionally, um, we've set up this thing where the, the program committee chair, currently Chris, um, is, is also um, a non-voting participant in the board meetings. And that's been working very well so far. Um, and that's it, really. Um, Good time, a little bit of time for questions and discussion. Um, happy to take these. Um, myself, board, crew, advisory committee members, also happy to discuss with you during the breaks, during the, the rest of today. Okay, um, Tom. Hello, just uh, wondering why a registration isn't transferable. Registration is, well, it's, it's the airline game, I'm afraid. Um, registration is transferable if you go for a full price registration, but not for a discounted one. Okay. Any other questions? No? Okay, as I say, we're, we're happy to discuss um, during the breaks um, and to take the feedback via the survey and other channels, but... Um, Thank you all for your time for the boring administrative stuff. Um, we will now return you to your uh, technical programming.